Hello, it's John here. I'm just, uh, just doing a little tag that's a little old, but I thought it would be interesting to do. And um, it's one of the things that motivated me to get going with uh, uh, coming on to BookTube as opposed to just doing YouTube videos. Anyway, so what this is, is the Has Steve Read This Tag, which uh, was Matthew at Maybury Books who did this originally. And um, anyway, but um, it was a little bit vague in its structure, and that's fine. Um, but I thought I'd make a few rules to f to to uh, uh, make it uh, fit. Um, I said um, I must own a physical copy. It must be in English, even if it's in translation. Um, um, I've chosen only things from university presses, um, and uh, I went for ten books. Because I know, so they, you, know, you can sort of. Because uh, some people went for eight, some people went for twelve, some people went for other things. So I just went for ten books. I've also added three picture books in, which I think are interesting and are just bonus things as well. So um, one of the things that I, ha I, of course, had problems with is that uh, my book collection isn't all um, uh, in English. Um, so I've excluded things like this, which is a, a Finnish grammar guide. Uh, largely because I don't think Steve's ever tackled uh, Finnish as a language. It is a lovely language. It's a fascinating language, um, but it's not something that he could do. So I'm, I've excluded that. I've also excluded, even though I think he's probably capable of reading this, which is the uh, Lehman uh, Trilogy, which is in Italian. And that's interesting. Um, and it's a lovely... Uh, uh, text to read um, and fascinating. I'm also fascinated how they turned it into plays because it's a play but it's massive and I'm not sure how you could do it and it's not got any, um, it's really just a verse um, um, uh, form. I think it's coming out in English this year or at least par partially it's coming out in English. I don't know whether it's, um, anyway, it's well worth seeing. I think the there are YouTube snatches from uh, the uh, Royal National Theatre production in London, um, and it's interesting. It's also interesting because it's playing everywhere, and it's um, in Europe anyway. I think they're going into America. I think it might have got to off Broadway or whatever. Was it off off Broadway? I'm never sure what these things are. The other kind of excluded are. Um, heavily mathematical books. So the uh, geometry of uh, uh, special relativity has been excluded, even though it is um, um, uh, a great book. It's basically got lots of diagrams and, and explanations and lots of, of uh, equations and things. I didn't think it was quite the, I think I thought it was a bit hard probably for him. The reason I'm, I'm talking about that is I've got lots of mathematics books. Um, I read them for pleasure as well, which might frighten a few people, but I was a mathematics teacher for many years and um, it just, uh, um, and the other thing I've chosen not to include is uh, things like this, which has a brilliant title quantum field theory for the gifted amateur um, because it, the gifted amateur is uh, somebody who is seriously good at uh, mathematics. I'm, it's, um, it's the sort of level that I, I can comfortably deal with but it's not the sort of level I think that um, uh, would uh, Steve would be able to uh, deal with. I did my um, degree and my master's thesis was on some aspects of semi-classical collision dynamics so that's where I'm coming from anyway so to the books proper and in honor of, of Steve because I think he does his book um, uh, hauls which I do love watching by the way Steve um, they are excellent um, he does them in size order or roughly size order so I thought I'd as to, to celebrate that I would do this in size order, starting with the smallest format book and working to the largest. So the first one here is Shanzai, 
by um, uh, a Korean-German um, philosopher and uh, it's Yong Chol Han and it, the, um, the English version of it is is by MIT Press and uh, it's uh, the subtitle is Deconstruction in Chinese. Now I have a problem with the concept of deconstruction but it is an exploration of originality and art and creation and things and it did make me think about uh, how what is original what is um, uh, how things work uh, both in Chinese thought and within um, Western thought and which ones are perhaps better second book is Oxford University Press it's called um, 1089 and all that and it's by uh, David Atchison and this is a, a, a lovely gentle walk in mathematics um, starting with children's um, mathematics with numbers and working through to other things it's a it's an invitation to go on a journey with mathematics it's not too hard it's not too but it's a, a book that I thought Steve may not have read it's a bit harder than the ones that he's shown that he's uh, had before. Anyway, the third one is a completely bizarre off the wall find. Now I found this in a German charity shop in Bielefeld and I was just impelled to buy it. It's by the, uh, the Catholic University of America. It's um, well published by them. And it's a translation of the travels of the Reverend Olaf, Olafur Egilson and the story of the raid by the Barbary Corsairs on Iceland in 1627. Now, the first thing is, I didn't know the Barbary Corsairs were going around Iceland at the time. It's not a great read. It is. It's, but it's also, I just had to buy it because it was just like, it was two euros and I thought, I'm going to forget this. It's just um, one of those weird books you want to try. And anyway, that's where I'm at. Um, the uh, next one is uh, Hilary Putnam, uh, and it's from Indiana University Press. And it's Jewish philosophy as a guide to life. It's um, for 20th century uh, uh, writers, Jewish writers in philosophy, uh, theology. Um, I think uh, uh, Rosenschweig I'd not met before, but I'd heard, I'd read about him rather than read him, and I have actually read him since. So that's, uh, um, it was a good thing. And um, but Buber I'd read in English. I'd never, I hadn't read him in German at that stage. Um, Levinas and uh, Wittgenstein, I'd read Wittgenstein in English and I'd read Levinas in uh, English and French. Um, I have to say that I find Levinas easier to read in French. That's how weird it is. Levinas uh, wrote in French, but um, his English translators don't do much service. So um, it's interesting. Hilary Putnam, famous uh, in the analytic uh, school of uh, philosophy, etc., etc., but in his later years, explored his Jewish roots effectively. So this is a, an interesting uh, read. The next one is from Oxford University Press. I've got quite a lot of Oxford University Press, um, but this is uh, uh, the Bijak of Kabir. Kabir is a, um, a late medieval, early modern um, uh, poet, religious poet and religious thinker. Um, he's, I got to encounter him through uh, uh, Sikhi, uh, Sikhism as you might call it, um, where uh, he's one of the Bhagats, one of the people who as a forerunner to, um, um, and it's included in the um, Guru Granth Sahib Ji, um, so in the religious text of the, of the Sikhs. This is actually a translation or partial translation of um, a, another book from a, another tradition that venerates Kabir as their sort of founder. 
his his poetry is is stark and quite challenging it makes challenges you it's got that gritty edge that i like i lo i like it when i uh, get to bits uh, by kabir in the uh, guru granth sahib ji it's um because it makes you think it it makes you sit up and think and he's a bit of a, that kind of man he wasn't he was a controversialist he was one of these people so this this is um, indian poetry uh, in translation of course the next one is by the university of virginia press and it's uh, Friedrich Spee von Lagenfeld. After every time I have to look at this thing, it's called the Cas uh, Cortio Criminalis, or a book on witch trials. It's basically a, um, a plea for fair trials and to not to and to look at why these people are prosecuting them. And you realise that actually the 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 use of the um, witch trials was mostly about power dynamics with male female and also rich poor grabbing the money of the of uh, these people who you know you blame them for something it's a bit um it reminds me um i think i'm probably influenced by the crucible in this sense in the crucible which is about the salem witch trials but also about the um uh, witch trials of uh, of the 1950s in uh, in america um, against communists and I think this is the is uh, a book for talking about seeing reason and things like that so this is um, uh, a fascinating read of him exploring what it means to have a fair trial and why people do things and stuff it's remarkably modern it's Jesu he's a Jesuit um, I know he was a professor I think at a um, Rintelen which is a now a Protestant town but it was it was taken over in the Thirty Years' War when this was written um, uh, by the Catholics, and uh, they were. Um, uh, it was an interesting er era for um, looking at these witch trials and things. Anyway, so a bit of enlightenment there, but from an interesting source. The next book is um, mathematics and, and physics. Uh, it's all about time by. Uh, David Merman, and this is published by Princeton Press, University Press, and it's about Einstein and Einstein's special relativity theory, but it's well written. I think he writes very well. Anyway, so this is um, a lovely little book uh, trying to explore through what it means, etc. And I just wonder whether he's ever read anything about uh, uh, Einstein. I've got quite a lot on uh, relativity. By the way, okay. The so next one is a actually a um, uh, by Indiana University Press, and um, it's Dupa Holmes and uh, Purse, as I understand you say his name. It's the sign of three, and it's an exploration of uh, themes from Holmes and Dupa was the um, the um, Edgar Allan Poe's. Uh, 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 detective and also looking at Peirce who is a 19th century um, philosopher logician and it's fascinating little book because it has material on all sorts of things so looking at um, at how we how how he used clues how he used um, uh, what show uh, Holmes says about uh, things um, I'm more interested in the Holmes part of it than the Dupin. Dupin seems to get a sh bit of a short shift on this. So he introdu this introduced me to abduction, which is the... So you've got deduction, induction and abduction. And abduction is a different way of thinking about things. And that's what Holmes actually did. Holmes was using abduction, not deduction, although he talks about deducting things um, or induction. So it's an interesting uh, book. It's also got... Um, a couple of essays by one of my uh, one of the philosophers I really find interesting, and that's uh, Jaco Hintika, um, who's a Finnish. I haven't read him in Finnish actually; I've only read him in English. Uh, Sherlock Holmes confronts modern logic towards a theory of information seeking through questioning, and as a result of reading this, I followed up on this, and he's developed a um, 
semantic uh, game theory um, for developing understanding language etc and logic and that's quite interesting stuff so uh, that's uh, uh, an interesting book the sign of three and um, uh, I think other people might be interested in that one I don't know anyway the next one is one of my favorite Chinese writers um, it's uh, by uh, Lu Shun. I'm just looking for who the print, who the publisher is. Harvard, it's Harvard, and it's oh, it's quite recent, so it might have come into um, uh, Steve's possession. And, and if it comes into his possession, I always assume he's read it, but he might not have done. But anyway, so this is uh, called Jottings Under Lamplight by Lu Shun, and uh, Lu Shun was a uh, early 20th century uh, writer. Um, He's a classic writer where I, I like his um, essays more than I like his uh, fiction. His fiction is not actually too prolific. It's fairly short, actually, relatively speaking, but he, he gave a lot of lectures. He became the grand man of, of uh, literature and then sadly suffered the great fate of all um, literary figures. He died before the revolution and Mao liked him, so... He then became deified as the great um, Lu Shun, who we should all learn from and things and stuff. So um, he's been deified in China. But these are his, um, his uh, uh, some of his, a selection of his uh, 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 forwards to things and things about culture and his comments. And also, he wrote a fascinating little um, thing about uh, uh, Nora from The Doll's House. Um, and I read that in Chinese. I had to read it in Chinese for my Chinese uh, course. And um, it was fascinating to see a, a, a Chinese person understanding um, of what Nora meant. Anyway, so that's uh, that's uh, Jottings Under Lamplight, one of my favourite writers. And the last one I got, and the largest book, is Unflattening by Nick uh, Susanis. And um, it's a uh, actually a PhD thesis, um, again by Harvard, printed by Harvard, but it's a PhD thesis as a graphic, in graphic format. I don't remember if he might well have uh, might well have appeared on his one in one of his three thousand videos, but I don't remember that. But anyway, that's um, I thought that was uh, an interesting uh, book. Um, I'm not going to say read it. A philosophical treatise in comic form. It says here. I really hate the word comic. I really hate the term graphic novel because quite often things aren't graphic novels. Uh, I you know I was looking one and said it's a graphic novel, and actually it's a graphic biography of somebody and I don't it's not a graphic novel it's a graphic form anyway so that's what I tend to call things anyway so that's my 10 books and I'll list them below also I'll try and link to um, uh, Matthew's uh, original tag I have got three extra uh, books just for for laughs these are visual books and I'm not really counting them but this one was one of is one of my favorites in the sense that it's called uh, Soviet bus stops. And it's literally just somebody who's gone around photographing different bus stops in the Soviet Union. And they are fascinating. And he does explore why they're fascinating, but it's it's a classic um, uh, of uh, how, how, what, when, when pe creative people are constricted, how they have to deal with that um, and what they do to, uh, Get around it. The next one um, is Father and Son or Vater und Son. The reason I've chosen this one is that it's um, there's no words in this or very few and I don't know if there's been an English edition but it is fabulous and I, when I was learning German to start with I was um, my teacher they had one-to-one -one tuition for a little while they used this and I had to explain the story in German so that's so for me. This is a, 
uh, thing. They're very, it's very funny. And um, anyway, so that's that one. And the last one of the visual uh, books is the blue guitar, which I will read here for his etchings by David Hockney, who was inspired by Wallace Stevens, who was inspired by Pablo Picasso. So this is a book which has the, this is the original in the blue period. It's the old guitarist by uh, Pablo Picasso. And then Wallace Stevens wrote a poem about it. And then in the, I think in the 1980s, it might have been later, um, uh, David Hockney uh, took the poem, listened to it and, and uh, or read it or used text from it and produced these etchings. I'll just, just flick through there, a few of them. And I think it's a fabulously interesting book. Interestingly, of course, I didn't know who Wallace Stevens was until um, uh, I'd read the, yeah, uh, I saw a TV program about uh, um, uh, David Hockney, who weirdly went to my school, but many years before me. Um, uh, he, he, making these etchings and talking about how he's constructed them and because he's actually quite a good raconteur. Anyway, so that's, um, uh, and so I was fascinated by this. I'm not, I'm actually not a fan of Pablo Picasso, so there's only the one picture, which is okay. And I discovered Wallace Stevens as a result. So I read some of his poetry um, after getting the book. So that's another um, uh, book. So these are all things that I wonder if Steve has read these. I'll list them below in, and uh, hopefully that will be uh, enough. Anyway, take care. Bye.